everybody, Jules is back. Almost seven weeks away, but I've got her back now. I'm super excited. She's in this nice, freshly renovated hangar I prepared for her. Can't wait to get her back in the skies. But unfortunately, as you can see, not going to be much flying going on this week. Both runways here at my airport are closed this week. They're working on this runway reconstruction project and they've reached the intersection, so no flying. But I thought I'd take the opportunity to tell all of you a little bit about what's been going on and why Jules has been gone for the last seven weeks. So, why was Jules gone all this time? Well, I'm getting ready to start my IFR training but Jules needed some help to get her ready for IFR. So for the last seven weeks, she's been out getting all sorts of new avionics put in. So why don't we just hop inside and take a look? All right, so here we are. Here's the new panel. As you can see, I didn't go through and do a complete overhaul. Instead, I chose a number of different Garmin products that allowed me to keep that retro look of my 55-year-old aircraft. So what do you say, let's walk through some of the choices that I made. All right, well, let's start with the avionics stack. First at the bottom, you see I have the same transponder I had before, the Stratus ESG. I'll talk more about that decision in a minute. Above that, you see Garmin's GTR 225. That is my second radio because originally I hadn't planned to replace my Bendix King 155, but it decided it had had enough of this life and it was time to go. Above that, you see where the real work happens. That's the GTN 650XI. That's my WAS capable GPS that also has VHF ground navigation capability as well. So all of the capabilities I could ever need for IFR flying are built into that. And then at the top, you see something that's really exciting for me, the Garmin GMA 350C. I finally have a real audio panel instead of just those goofy toggle switches that I had before. Over here on the pilot side of the aircraft, you can see that I elected to go with a pair of Garmin GI 275s. I wanted to replace all of the mechanical gyro instruments that were in my aircraft. Let's face it. They're noisy and they're prone to failure. In fact, in the lead up to getting these upgrades done, my turn coordinator failed, had to be disconnected and marked inoperable. My attitude indicator also failed, so that had to be replaced with a used unit. So hooray for no more noisy gyros at startup and shutdown. Hooray for no more vacuum system. All of this is really cool. But why did I choose the 275s over the more moderately priced G5s? Well, two things. One, going with the 275s didn't require any modifications to the panel. We didn't have to cut the plastic cover to fit the square bezels of the G5s. But more importantly, the GI-275s can serve as the primary instruments to replace the entire six-pack. Now you see that I kept my airspeed indicator and the altimeter and the vertical speed indicator. I kept those more just for backup purposes than anything else. But everything that I need for complete instrumentation is right there in the middle. One thing that I do hope to do is make some more video content about the GI-275s. I couldn't find a lot of video content out there and what I did find was mostly focused just on the engine information system. So I do want to make some more content diving into the really cool features of these two units. A quick hop in the back seat and you can see another really important upgrade. I had headset jacks installed in the back seat. Previously, I only had headset connections up front. Now I can carry three passengers and we can all wear headsets and communicate with each other. All right, so I said I would come back and talk about the transponder. I elected to keep my Stratus ESG for a couple reasons. First of all, is just the fact that it works. And so from a cost perspective, it didn't make a lot of sense to replace it with a new Garmin unit. I like how it works with ForeFlight. I get ADS-B in and out with it. It all works great. Now, the downside, of course, is that it does not communicate with my GTN 650. So I don't get traffic and weather on the GPS. 
But honestly, that wasn't a really big deal to me because I already have all that in ForeFlight and I always fly with multiple iPads. So there was no reason to have all that information on the GPS as well. So it wasn't just avionics that I had done. I also had to have my propeller overhauled. You see, at my last annual, they identified some surface corrosion that needed to be addressed. And since I knew that would take a few weeks, I figured what better time than when the plane is gonna be out of service anyway, having the avionics work done. So I had the folks at Rev Aviation, who did all the avionics work, remove the propeller and ship it off to Maxwell Aircraft Services. And as you can see here, when the camera comes back into focus, they did a really nice job of cleaning up the propeller, completely overhauling it. So they stripped it down, sanded off all of that corrosion and refinished the propeller. So that is all fresh and new as well. So thus far, I'm really loving the new avionics. I'm really glad that I elected to get the Flightstream 510, which gives me the capability for two-way flight plan transfer between ForeFlight on my iPad and the GTN 650XI. So keeping those two in sync, it's absolutely great. I'm also really glad that we were able to relocate the transponder over to the center stack. So I no longer have to reach all the way across the aircraft to the right side in order to put in a new squat code. With that transponder out of the way, I'm also looking forward to putting an iPad mount over on that right hand side. Previously, I would mount my larger iPad on a suction cup mount to the window, but that blocks a lot of visibility out that side of the aircraft. For now though, it's just about getting in the air and getting familiar with these new avionics. I've had a few trips already in the plane before they shut down the airport, and I'm looking forward to getting started with an instructor to finish off the remaining bits of my IFR training. All right, so there you have it. There is the complete avionics upgrade I did. Jules is back home in that beautiful new hangar space that I renovated. And I'm diving into IFR flying. I already passed the written exam. I'm starting to train with an instructor. So things are moving along. Now, of course, I'm sure you're all asking, what did this all cost? So let's talk about that briefly. All in, all said and done, it was just short of $50,000. So bear in mind, there were some unexpected expenses. And I think this is something you have to understand if you're looking at an avionics upgrade. This plane's 55 years old. So there was a fuel center that had to be addressed. There were problems with both the pedo and the static systems. So both of those had to get fixed. And there were a couple other little things. So all in all, it turned out really well. A little more than I had budgeted, but I had room. I expected those unexpected charges. What about Rev Aviation, the folks who did all the work? They were amazing. I can't say enough great things. Throughout the whole process, they were sending me pictures of what they were working on, how things were progressing. They stayed in great contact with me throughout. Um, they clarified with me on different preferences that I had for how they configured different items. It was just a great experience. Now, they quoted me four to six weeks. As I said, it took almost seven. There were some delays because of the propeller and with people being out sick and stuff. And, and that's to be expected too. Honestly, seven weeks was not a problem for me. And speaking of the propeller, I also have to give a big shout out to Maxwell Aircraft Services in Minnesota because they did a tremendous job on that propeller. I was so concerned it wasn't gonna meet spec. And you know what, the day that they called me and told me that, hey, it's, it, it all measures up and we're gonna go ahead and refinish it and it'll be back to you. That was great. So got the propeller overhauled, it's all set to go. They were wonderful to work with. So that's it. Thanks so much for checking it out and we'll see you out there in the skies. Yeah.